So then I clicked on the X button to make it go away, but then it was a link to another ad, and when I tried to cancel that, another window came up, and it was this. Dude. What the f***, bro? What does this mean, dude, bro? What the f***, bro? Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and once again, I have my good friend Perch for the Comics by Perch podcast and YouTube channel. How you doing, Perch? I'm doing great. My podcast actually sucks. I, I don't upload things there like you do. So you're doing a great job. People should absolutely subscribe to Thinking Critical podcast. If you haven't, what's wrong? Yeah, we've got daily content, basically. Yeah, so you're actually doing the work. <laughs> I'm, I've tried to do the work. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, Perch, I've been a little bit bummed this week. First of all, you mm. attacked my, uh, you know, my moral fiber when you attacked Arby's, and now you've decided to go after what was my go-to like as a teenager, when I actually got a date in high school, you're going after Red Lobster. Like, what the hell? No, man? no, uh, quite the opposite. I so you're you know you're you're an older guy, not as old as I am, but you know you remember when Red Lobster was good. Red Lobster yeah. uh, was absolutely the destiny. I mean, in uh, the '80s and '90s, Red Lobster was great. Uh, now, you know, certainly it's not a five star seafood restaurant. It's like privately owned Michelin star, nothing like that. But it was solid. I, I used to Red Lobster was an event. Love to go there. I the point I made, which I, actually somebody else made, I agree with, is the last decade has been unkind to Red Lobster. It's fallen from grace and it's it's it, it hurts my heart. Red Lobster used to be, you know, uh, you know, high class establishment at, at low class prices. That's why I like you get the Cheddar Bay biscuits, you get some pretty Agreed. decent crab legs. Yeah, and and the biscuits are still solid. It's just uh, what I think used to be like. I, I I remember vividly. I'm sure you do too. I, I would go in there as a kid, and you pick your lobster out of the tank. Oh yeah. And then they would cook it. And today that lobs that tank is for show. They're they're not cooking it's any all of that. Frozen, stuff. huh? That's that's right. So I'm I'm uh, I'm we are in agreement. That was red lobster was great. I I am, you know, I'm just sad for its its tragic fall. Well, the only person I've seen that's had worse takes on anything than you've had on food lately is Jerry Conway. He came back this week. He's talking about uh, we need to get rid of sound effects and comic books. Are you kidding me? I love sound effects and comic books, Perch. Is it because I'm too old to, to let go of, of the great things with comics? Why are we changing this? I I, I mean, nobody's going to listen to that anyway. Unfortunately, it's it's getting to be one of the more on a long list of kind of weird takes uh, that Conway's had over the years. But that one... Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is crazy. You need you need sound effects. Now, sound effects are interesting, though. They're not for every artist. I think sound effects and the art go together like peanut butter and jelly. It's it's hand in hand. You've got to, you know, it, it's going to work in some areas, not work in others. But to say get rid of them, I mean, that's crazy. Now, I guess he got some blowback on that one. So he tried to you know clarify. It was like, I just think that uh, they're, they're redundant now. They everybody use the like boom or whatever. It's the same sound effect over and over. So, hey, if they even need new sound effects, I got three new sound effects for, for comic books. What do you think, Persh? Oh, dear First God. up, okay. boom shakalaka. Well, right? I mean, that's, that's a classic, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, you, you only see that in video games. You don't really see it in comics, do you? That's that's true. But, I mean, I, I it's 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 quite a mystery why that one isn't being used more. Another one would be WAP. Huh? WAP, okay. That w would be in trouble, but yes, okay. Yeah, you would when Batman slapping the piss out of Robin, get a little sure. whack. You just and then yeah, gotta my keep last one would there. be uh, damn. <laughs> when there's like a hot chick on the on the page, you throw a little <laughs> damn behind her. Yeah? <laughs> sure, why not? I think that could be used for all kinds of things. You know, you could have uh, you know Reed Richards uh, puts down the science and punches somebody, and and you get a you get a damn there in the background as well. So it could it, it's multi purpose is what I'm saying. Absolutely. And the more exciting the dam is, you get more A's in there, spread it out, yeah. let people know. Damn. I agree. Dude. Yeah. Hey, so no, there's nothing that, wrong with the, with some new sound effects. I'm all for it. I bring new sound effects. Well, I mean, if his point is that people are just putting boom over and over again, then that's stupid. Sure. I, I can agree to that. But you don't get rid of sound effects. I mean, and, and look at uh, how successful manga is. You look at like a book like My Hero Academia. They got smashed. They got sound effects all over the place. So absolutely you gotta have sound effects yeah that was a bs tech on jerry conway i got some more bs for you perch oh, about no. the comic book industry we're going into some stupid stories okay all right here's some bs for you how about this one do you remember countdown to final crisis of course yes over 100 or 100 over a thousand pages of an incoherent mess released weekly from issue 51 to issue one 
basically to uh, to line up with the final crisis event. Different yep. writers, different artists. What the what the hell were DC thinking? Uh, they're thinking make money. I think um, no, but it it what's weird about this a thousand is, page so, prologue. You know, I'll be honest with you. Um, I agree with your take here on that series, but what surprises me is how many people remember Countdown extremely fondly as a, as a great like that. There is a, a I think we're in the minority on this one. Believe it or not, I there are a lot of people who love Countdown. And I always felt like this was, it was cheap marketing. I think if you're trying to hype up an event, maybe DC should give this away for free. This could be something that, you know, it's a little kind of teaser, you know, comics. Uh, once upon a time, there was this uh, thing where for several weeks, DC would put out like two pages of comics and they sent it to the comic store and you're meant to just slip it into the bag with the other comics. And it was a good way of promotion. I always felt that's what this was, but instead they're, they're charging for it. Tons of writers, artists couldn't tell the, the, you're supposed to feel urgency, like it was counting down to something. But over 52 issues, that that's you, you don't feel urgency at all. It's like this, you know, it'll oh, be over. Still counting down in May. We'll see where we're at in June. I mean, that it wasn't 30 it, more it, issues to go. It's yeah. reminding me on the cover. D exactly. <laughs> it, it didn't work for me, but I, but I am always shocked by people who love this. Maybe somebody in the comments can explain why is it you like that series? Because there's people who love that thing, and I don't get it. I'm just shocked Marvel hasn't done some stupid shit like this. Well, let's yeah, do a two-year countdown to the next fucking Avengers event. I I agree. I uh, although you'd have I to take two what... years off of the events to do the countdown. Well, sure, you know you can't you can't really do a countdown when you're you never stop. Absolutely, I'd still say that's BS. I if you liked it, you liked it. I think it's an incoherent mess. Too many what? writers, too many artists, too many repeated story plots, and yay. Yeah, just read Final Crisis if you really want to. It absolutely was. Uh, that was a mess of a series, as most of the weekly series are. I mean, bluntly, I know B Batman Eternal has a bunch of fans, too, and I, I think that one was a mess. But Speaking of hot messes, let's get into the Chuck Austin era of X-Men. <laughs> a lot of people are going to say it's, uh, what is it, the Draco is the worst? Well, yeah, I mean, it's... Nah, uh, it's Holy it's, War. It, yeah, no, it's, it's Angel in a jailbait relationship with AIDS curing blood. <laughs> it's like it, they're crucifying children on the very first page. I believe they're going to install yeah. Nightcrawler as the Pope. And it's all because of this elaborate plan where they're going to ruse people into thinking the rapture happened because like some nun was raped and was kicked out of the church. Yeah, no, get out of here, Chuck Austin. This is some fucking bullshit, man. It wasn't good. Now, I, I mean, <laughs> Joe and I have talked about this and uh, I, those weren't good comics. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think we've, I can no longer say that was the darkest era of the X-Men. <laughs> well, I did say this is Chuck Austin was the worst X-Men writer of all times until Titty Howard came along. Well, I, I mean, I, I think the entire uh, age of X-Men probably eclipsed it for being stupid. I, I think there's, we've had, we've seen some dark days in the X-Men. I, I think, uh, history has made the Chuck Austin run kind of slowly go up and that is, uh, just baffling. <laughs> Not as long, not on my watch, Perch. We're going to remind people just how stupid his, his red words was. That is stupid. No, no, I'm just, I think some people have found ground worse and gone under uh, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's redeemable like, now that you've had some shit that's even even worse. I, I mean, I read some of these comics and I'm He didn't write out. Hellfire Gala. No, exactly. I mean, you, you, <laughs> there was no Hellfire Gala coming out of Chuck Austin. I, I read some of these comics now and I'm like, man, I wish Chuck Austin would come back. And that's that's words I haven't ever wanted to utter in my life. What was with the the AIDS thing? I, I don't even understand why that was even in the book. It, well, Marvel was weird at the time. I mean, you, you keep in mind you had a bunch of of really strange choices uh, in that decade. Uh, you, I mean, what a lot of people forget. Remember the Alpha Flight issue, the classic one where North Star uh, came out. Mm -hmm. um, what people don't remember is the other part of that story, which was uh, there were you know babies with AIDS, and there was a guy trying to who was jealous because the, the baby was getting more attention than his kid who died. I mean, it was, it was, they, their Marvel had a, who they wrote really that Tom King. Uh, it was no, no, it, some strange, <laughs> strange stuff. There was Marvel had a lot of very strange AIDS related storylines during that time frame, And it was, it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Don't go read X-Men Holy, Holy War unless you just want to read something that's just absolutely terrible, but apparently mm. it's redeemable now that we've got, uh, you know, 
Age of X-Men. We've got Hellfire Gala and a couple other uh, stinkers that have happened lately. I, it's just no longer you can't you can you can no longer point to that and say that's that's as bad as it gets. <laughs> that, I can't call bullshit on that perch. That is absolutely yeah. a, a fine take on that one. <laughs> Next up, we're going to go to, uh, you know what the only thing worse than, than uh, like, super edgy Frank Miller? Oh, I... Is I, Frank Miller trying to go over edge on himself. So we get the Dark Knight Strikes again. Yeah, yeah. So he, he decides that, well, everyone liked the political satire, and it was pretty edgy. I got to go further this time and basically make one of the most repulsive stories uh, in, in history. Really, I think... Uh, as great as Frank Miller is on his best, he is amongst the worst writers of all time at his worst. You think about All-Star Batman and Robin, which I guess there is some redeeming qualities because it's kind of funny and how weird it is. But you know, those Dark Knight, sure. Dark Knight Strikes Again, and even any of the ones that come after that. And then, you know, like, uh, was it um, the Superman Year One kind of crap? Oh, but yeah, yeah. This you thing know- is terrible. And the worst thing is the fucking art. I think uh, no, I think I think Frank Miller is, is one thing I think about Frank Miller is that I think there's comics he does where clearly he's invested in the comic and he cares and he uh, he's he's into it. It's a story he's clearly thought about. I think you look at his kind of very classic uh, Daredevil run. You look at uh, even things like Sin City that he produced there, 300, some of these different titles. Um, and, and you see, you know, Batman Year One, some of this that stuff. I think he's there. You get a Frank Miller uh, that is uh, is very invested in the story. You get a good story, and then I think there's a secondary Frank Miller that has been given a check of some kind, and he is just uh, it's like Phoning let's see it in. Yeah, it's it's. I got to do Frank Miller stuff. I think he gets experimental when he gets when he gets like a check for something, and he, maybe he's not really into it. Like we need you to do another one of these Dark Knight Return sequels, and he's like, uh, I don't really have a story idea, but I mean, you're paying me, so you know, here's where I'll pull out like the crazy stuff that. You know, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't bank on myself with. And I think that's that's what's happening here. I, I think he's because uh, because he, he tends to be a parody, like you said, of himself. He tends to to pull stuff out. That's just very, very weird. Um, and it, it at best, it's it's funny to read at, at worst. It's just terrible writing. Absolutely. When Frank Miller is trying to, like, ape himself, he's actually a worse version of Frank Miller than Tom King. Well, yeah. Uh, wow. That's a. So I'm saying um, it, huh. the, the art was just in this thing was atrocious. Like, it's, did he forget how to draw Batman? And then there was stuff happening on panel. Ugh. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, again, I, I just think it's like I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this for a check. That's that's how it comes across to me. I, I just it, it doesn't feel like any kind of project that has got a lot of passion and energy to. And and he doesn't tend to talk about those things when when you go on and you see him in panels, you see him at shows. Now, granted, he's, he's aware of Terrace now, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> he uh, he doesn't ever mention those like the, the, the to you, you. He never like the amount of times he's talked about all star Batman and Robin is is almost nil. Uh, he just it just doesn't come up. Yeah. Rightfully so. Now, these last two ones okay. are the cream of the crap. I'm talking these are two of the worst comics ever, <laughs> if not the two worst comics ever. And I'm calling bullshit on both of them. Okay. I know you actually talked about one of them pretty in depth a couple of years ago, I believe, oh, wow. on your channel. Let's talk about Marvel. Marvel. Oh, Marvel. Yeah. Bill yeah. Jemis decided he was going to show the other writers at Marvel how to do it. And yeah. this thing is is the one of the weirdest comic books ever because you look at the covers and it's like these uh, uh, scantily clad women. They're super sexy. Has nothing to do with the interiors. Yeah, great. And you get to the first yeah. two books, and it's like a parody of him talking shit on the comic industry. And then I don't even know what the rest of the fucking series is. And I think it's seven issues, maybe. It's seven issues. Is billed as six issues. It was. It went for seven. <laughs> um, the first issue was was like you said, is more or less a parody of the comic book industry, um, and a lot of very topical things. Like they were making jokes about uh, AOL a lot, and uh, Ted Turner and. Uh, and, and discs that AOL would send out to get free internet minutes. And it was just, it was very, very dated humor and not good humor. And the second issue, uh, it's, it turned more to the comic industry. And they had that classic panel where Iron Man was about to use the N-word and the Black Panther mm-hmm. stopped him. Um, and then it... Isn't it that kinda, where they're murdering people too, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's bad. And, and then it turns into kind of a time travel philosophical epic and... And then one of the issues, they just stop drawing the panels and just and some of the 
you know, page lettering kind of just there for like, it's like, we didn't want to actually draw this page. So we'll just put the script in. Um, and they did that. And then, uh, and then, then the final issue, uh, it, they, it's just an issue on how to submit to Epic. And it's, it's, it's kind of a guide of, of how to prepare a script if you want to write a Marvel comic. And it's got like, you know, the, the, what we're going to pay you printed in that comic. And it's, it's even there, it's like the most miserable business terms you've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's a bizarre, it was a bizarre series that made no sense. Yeah, but once you read six issues, why would you ever want to submit to this guy? He's obviously a moron. Submit to him. And and it does say things like, we'll keep all the money. I mean, it's, it's, it's blatantly uh, hilarious in how terrible the business terms are. Um, and it, it's just a very, very strange, very strange comic. It, that is it's one of the worst comics of all time. Like a community outreach thing. Was it undecided? Yeah. Yeah, or it was that. Was- it was a, a trouble that Mark Millar wrote and um, and then a good comic by Peter David. There was three of yes. them. Yes. Yeah. That was it. The Peter David comic ended up winning. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was it was a. Uh, yeah, I mean the Peter David comic was a legit comic. The uh, Trouble book by Mark Millar, love love Mark, uh, but that was a uh, that was the uh, the story of why, of how Aunt May was a whore, and uh, and then Marvel. I like Mark Millar too, but he's not quite like Frank Miller. But when he goes too far, he also goes too far. Sure, sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was a that was a hold my beer moment for sure. Yeah, he, that's an you awful know, when you're comic. pushing boundaries, sometimes you're going to go over the boundary. I, I think a lot of people listening to this right now have probably never heard of Marvel. Do yourself a favor. Go dig go into it. it. No, no. Go <laughs> go look. Do it. It, is, it, is, it, it will not understand what you're seeing. No, no. It's um, it's more incoherent than any of the stuff we talked about already. And these these things are terrible. Yeah. Now, this last one, okay. I personally think this is one of the big regrets of my comic book reading life. Um and there's also a sequel to this that I think is actually even worse. I think this is the worst probably comic story event. There are probably single issues that are worse than this in totality, but I think this is cry for justice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the yeah, Justice League yeah. torturing people? Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I don't even, I don't know what went wrong exactly on this this comic. I It, uh... I think it was it was an attempt to try and respond to kind of darker, edgier times. But I mean, again, the, like like uh, some of the other things we've talked about, that this was another one where uh, they were doing weird things at the time. Um, you had not too long after this, you had the identity crisis come out, which uh, you know f- featured Sue getting raped and other things uh, and and murdered. I mean, th- there was it, it was th- this was a very strange time for DC with a lot of, of very weird kind of edgelord decisions going on. This comic uh, was, I think this is that, it, Cry for Justice is probably the sins past of DC. It's the one everybody tries to just forget ever occurred. And what they do to Roy Harper is just beyond miserable. You know, obviously uh, they, they have his arm removed by Prometheus. He loses his daughter. Prometheus essentially wins. He blows up the entire city. You see kids dying on page. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, I I don't understand who would greenlight this or what they were going with. Um, this is what started kind of this reputation, I think, of DC claiming that uh, or people claiming that DC like to just pick certain characters and just torture them uh, on the page forever. The same thing has been said about Wally West, and it's uh, it. I mean, it's it's this comic has been largely forgotten. As you, you mentioned, I mean, Roy has they've they've completely walked that back. You know, obviously he has his arm again and they're they're trying to back his daughter recently in uh, Infinite Frontier. Yeah, they're they're just trying to erase everything, every memory of that book and never refer to it again. But it gets worse. Do you remember J.T. Kroll's Ode to Terrible, also known as The Rise of Arsenal? Sure. No, I mean, it, it kept during that time. It kept going. Um, this, it's worse of course he's, he's lost his kid he's lost his arm so he yeah. turns back to heroin he ends up uh his daughter's mom the super villain comes back he ends up he's beating her senseless while yeah. thinking about like this is the best lay of my life and also saying she likes it rough as yeah. he's beating her and then he decides he's going to tie her up and rape her until he finds out he's, it's it's not only his arm that he's missing you know what i'm saying yeah i, I know what you're saying yeah we we all know no i i <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it was a, it was a terrible se- look. I, I, this whole again, this whole era was really bad. It was a lot of of really strange decisions, and um, I I don't know. Let's see, worse event. I, I think there's probably worse events, but in terms of like story and what you did to a character, I think this would have to be at the top of the list for just character destruction. Um, and it, I mean, it just goes back to with Roy. Yeah, they've walked away entirely from it. Um, and to the point that they don't mention any of this. I mean, like it, it's it's completely something that they've redacted now from the book. Yeah, it's just uh, so odious and terrible. So I'm calling bullets bullshit on all that stuff. This is all crap, yeah. Perch. I agree. That's 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 bad. <laughs> and to where to end where we began, I call it crap that uh, Red Lobster must go regain its former glory. Come on, bring bring back the restaurant I love. Don't. Don't have don't have us trying to pick which one is worse, Olive Garden or Red Lobster. It's a horrible, horrible place to be. Get Listen, let's have the Red Lobster of old. If you go to Olive Garden, you navigate the menu correctly. I e. you only get the soup, salad, and breadsticks. It's completely fine. Well, but how do you screw up Italian food like that? You're, you're screw up. spaghetti is the thing that people who can't cook can make, and and Bad. Olive Garden vanishing to screw up spaghetti. I mean, how do you do that? Bad. I, I went to, to Rome one time with my a very good friend of mine, and we get outside of the Colosseum, and we're hungry. And we go down this alley. There's a sign that says uh, authentic Italian. We go down there, and I get my, my, my lasagna, and I take a bite, and I, I say, you need to try this. And she's like, why? Is it good? And I was like, just try it. And she, she tried it. She said, this tastes like Chef Boyardee. I said, my thoughts exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, probably was. In Rome. <laughs> we're food snobs what can you say but uh, thank you as i agree bullshit on all this stuff absolutely well thank you very much perch for joining me i know you've been busy this week and uh, we'll talk to you next week on some comic stuff sounds great